pie crust is just one of those fundamental recipes that's so good for you to know. You can build a ton of different things off of it. You can make sweet, savory. There are just a few ingredients and a special techniques that make this the flakiest easiest foolproof all butter pie crust and if we're gonna go through all the effort of making pie crust we're gonna make a double batch so that's what we're making today and then that way you can always just keep one in your freezer so the next time you need pie crust you already have it made in the freezer ready to go so let's do it Okay, so I totally forgot to mention that we're also making a quiche. It's pancetta, gruyere, and leeks, and it's so, so good. For the pie crust, you'll need three sticks of butter. I prefer European butter because it has a higher fat content and leads to a flakier crust, but you can, of course, use normal butter. Either way, you're going to cut those lengthwise into quarters and then down the stick of butter, cutting it into cubes. They should be about half inch cubes. Place those in the fridge while we prep the flour. To a bowl, add four cups or 480 grams of all-purpose flour. Add in one teaspoon kosher salt and give that a little mixy mix and toss in your butter cubes. Start tossing the cubes in the flour, making sure to break up all the pieces so each cube is fully coated in flour. Once everything is coated, push the pieces over to one side of the bowl so we can do the smush technique. And this is something I learned from the amazing Erin McDowell, so I'll link her video above as well. Basically, for the smush technique, you're just smushing each cube between your middle, index, and thumb to flatten it out. Put all of your smushed pieces to the other side so every cube gets smushed. Toss your cubes in the flour once again and then start working it between your forefingers and thumb, trying to break up the pieces even further. You want to continue this until you have varying shapes and sizes but nothing bigger than a walnut. Make a well in the center and pour in about a half cup of ice cold water. Toss the flour into the center of the bowl and begin to toss everything together. You'll get some pieces that clump together so just break those apart and toss some more. Grab a portion with your hands, press it together, and whatever holds together is hydrated and goes over to the side. Continue until you just have dry pieces in the bowl. Add another 1 ish cup of water and toss everything together again. Once everything is hydrated, dump it all out and knead until the dough starts coming together more. You can still have some scraggly pieces, but for the most part, you want it to be holding together. Flour your dough and rolling pin and roll the dough into an approximately 18 inch by 8 inch rectangle. It doesn't have to be precise and perform a letter fold by folding the top third over the center and then the bottom third to the center as well. Rotate 90 degrees and repeat. Cut the dough in half to create your two dough balls. Cover in plastic and you'll notice it will still look broken up a bit here so to help prevent the edges from cracking when we roll it out, we're going to press it down and encourage it to become one. Place in the refrigerator for at least one hour, but up to three days. You can also freeze it for up to six months, so that's great for that additional dough ball if you're not using it right now. Once you're ready to use your dough, flour your surface, the dough, your rolling pin, and begin pounding it out. This will just help expand it without making the edges crack. Don't go too hard here, just a light thwap. <laughs> Once you've pounded it for about 30 seconds, you can begin to roll. Apply even pressure from the center to the edges, rotating, flipping it, and adding flour to keep it from sticking to the surface. For a nine inch pan, you'll want a 12 inch round, and a nine and a half inch pan, you'll want 14 inches. Choose your dimensions and add your pie crust to whatever pie dish you're using. Lift the sides and lower it into the edges of the pie plate, trying not to stretch it out. Use your other hand to help guide it down, and once it's in place, you can use your hands to gently smush it into the corner and edges of the pie plate. Grab some kitchen scissors and trim the edges, leaving behind an approximately one inch border. Tuck the edges under and then press that into the pie plate to seal the edge. If there are any edges that look like they're cracking, you can use your fingers just to smooth it out. Begin the crimp using two fingers on the inside and your thumb on the outside. Press your thumb forward and inside fingers down and into the pie plate. You want it to sort of attach to the plate. Take a knife and poke some holes in the bottom and sides of your dough. This is just so that gas can release from the dough and everything can cook evenly. 
Place in the fridge for about 15 minutes to harden up and preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. To prep the crust for baking, layer two pieces of aluminum foil crisscrossing each other so that you can cover the whole crust and edges. Fill the inside with pie weight, sugar, beans, or rice. You just want to weigh down the dough. As you can see, I'm making both a nine inch and a nine and a half inch just so that you can see the difference. Pop your prepped pie crust into the preheated oven and cook for 25 minutes. Remove from the oven after the 25 minutes, remove those pie weights and place back in the oven, but lower it to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and you're gonna bake it for another 15 to 20 minutes or until it is starting to turn golden and crispy. You'll notice on this nine inch that the bottom had some air get trapped, but don't worry, the air will slowly release if you poke a teeny tiny hole in it or if you apply gentle pressure. But be careful if you're applying pressure because the steam that will rise is very hot. You'll know that your crust is crispy and perfectly baked if you can spin it around your pie plate and nothing is sticking. Let those cool and let's make the quiche filling. Slice two shallots into rounds and grate two ounces of Gruyere on the smaller size of your grater. Remove the leaves of two sprigs of thyme and let's cook the pancetta first. Adding four ounces of teeny tiny pancetta cubes to a large pan set over medium high heat, spread it out in a single layer and cook for about three to five minutes or until it begins to brown and crisp up. Toss it around and cook for another minute or two just to get everything browned and use a slotted spoon to remove the pancetta leaving the fat behind. Next, add in your shallots, thyme, and lower the heat to medium. Toss those around until everything is softened and some pieces are crisping up. Use the slotted spoon to remove and let's get this custard going. Measure two cups of whole milk and one cup of heavy cream and just set that to the side. To a large bowl, add six eggs and give those a whisk. Once fully mixed up, start to add in your milk and cream mixture. You want to mix until all of those stringy, eggy bits are broken up. Add in about one tablespoon kosher salt, some fresh cracked black pep, and mixy mix one more time. And as you'll see in a moment, this is the correct amount of custard mixture for a nine and a half inch plate if we're using all the toppings. So why I used a nine inch plate, I don't know, but I'll include the proportions for the nine inch in the description below. To the bottom of the plate, add your cheese, pancetta, and leeks. Pour in your custard mixture as high as you can possibly go without it pouring over the sides. Bake it in a 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven for 50 to 70 minutes or until the center is just set and the whole quiche is still a little jiggly. You're gonna wanna let this rest for several hours, ideally two or three, or you can let it rest overnight and eat it in the morning. So it's actually the next day, but I'm in the same outfit because continuity. I covered it all, put it in the fridge, and then this morning I put it in the oven and then preheated it to 325. So as it was preheating, it was in there and I cooked it for like 15 to 20 minutes. So let's dive in. <laughs> And make sure you're getting all the way to the bottom. So like really getting the crust so that you can get a nice clean slice. And my mark of a truly great quiche is one that you can hold in your hand and eat it like a pizza. Look at how flaky that crust is. Still so good the next day, like truly delicious and amazing. But if you want to ensure that you have that crispy crust all over the next day as well, or if you're just reheating it, what you can do is as the oven is preheating, have like a pizza stone or a cast iron baking sheet in the oven as it's preheating, and then cut it into slices, put your slices on that preheated baking sheet, and then reheat it for 10 to 15 minutes. I hope you guys liked the recipe. Of course, this one is more focused on just the pie crust and not the quiche, but the quiche is a bonus. So let me know what you wanna see next. Like, subscribe, comment. You know what to do. You know what the algorithm wants and I will see you on the next one.